we are going to get four of my favorite people on here. Dom, can you hear me? Loud and clear. How's it going over there? You guys are on Make Your Luck. I like that. Yeah, new podcast coming out soon. Oh, that, that's going to be gangster. I can only imagine. All right. I see Dom and Thomas. I see Adam. Okay. And I see AJ. Let me move you guys up here. All right, guys. So I am very, very excited to have the four of these guys on tonight. If you guys don't know what these guys have been doing, real quick, Dom, what month did you start with us? That had to be like October? Yeah, around there. Uh, maybe October. September. Yeah, it was like your first full month. Okay. And then these three guys, when did you get them to start with us? I got my license October 10th and had my quit my job in December at the ballet and had my first full month in January. It's just been upstream since January. So I really had my first full month January. Okay. AJ's been here a little bit less than that or same amount? Same, same time. We, he got his license like the day or so after me. So first full month in January, I believe it was about. Okay. Right. And Adam is new, new, like very fresh and new. Yeah. So I started just about a month and a half ago. And okay. I've been loving it ever since. Okay, so I want to give you guys a proper introduction, you guys, because this is how important this is. So these four absolute killers have worked with us, I mean, six months or less, right? Um, Adam, I mean, barely a month. These guys, hardly six months. Um, and they truly, and someone will get mad at me for saying this, but this is facts because I track this stuff. We have never had a faster growing team in Inspire Group, okay? So to the point where sometimes I check their business and I'm like, these guys good? They're very good, okay? So we've never had a... A, a hungrier go-getter um, group of young people that absolutely no experience in the sales industry, um, absolutely come in here to crush it. So I'm very, very proud of you guys. I want you guys all to grab your notepads out because what these guys are doing and what they're going to be able to share with you that you can implement in your own business is going to be a big deal. So I'm very, very um, happy to have them on. So real quick, Dom, before, if anybody who doesn't know you, can you kind of give us, you know, we'll kind of just go to all four of you, your, your quick background, right? What were you doing before this? Any sales experience before this, and how did you find um, FFL? Yeah, so um, I recently graduated from FAU uh, back in May. I was working at the valet over the summer. I went to like seven different sales interviews, medical sales devices, loan sharks, all this crazy stuff, um, and they were all honestly terrible. And then I was working at the valet one day, and Sean Mike actually pulled up to the valet. Um, kind of said, what do you guys have to lose? You're running around chasing cars. Um, so I took my test, passed it, and haven't looked back since. I love that. And uh, Dom, wasn't there something else weird that you told me that that Sean did? Well, I can't remember, but he said something or? Um, trying to think. Or maybe you said he like tipped really well and you were like, what the heck do you do? Oh, yeah. So he would he would always come up, you know, here in Boca, there's a lot of um, well off people, but they're usually quite rude about it. You know, they throw money at your way and say, don't touch my car. Um, but he was very respectful handed us, you know, a hundred dollars each. And we were like, what does this guy do? So we asked him and that's when he kind of said, what do you have to lose? Um, which yeah. really to me. I love that though. Cause you guys ask questions too, which like closed mouths don't get fed. So yeah. Thomas, you were doing the same thing as well. Yeah. So I guess for me, um, it's a little bit disappointing how it all started. I met Sean at the Valet as well um, in 2021. Um, so I was at the Valet for three years. And um, in my first year at the Valet, I met Sean at Capital Grill. And I, um, I, he would throw us $200 every time. So until I was like, hey, man, what do you do? And he told me about the business. And, um, and um, I kind of just went from there. I was like, all right, cool. I booked the exam. I started studying and then I gave up on myself. And I was like, you know, it's probably too good to be true. It's probably a scam, all this, everything you could say that, that most people think about the business before you start. And I gave up on it. And it wasn't until like two years later um, where, you know, I was working at the Valley with Dom and he was just exhausted of it. And Sean said, what do you have to lose? And he took the, he took the initial step, which I'll always respect him for because I wouldn't be here without him. That's why he's such a great leader of this team as well. Um, and it wasn't until he kind of, he just never came back in those two weeks. And then he started talking to me and AJ about it. And he's like, dude, I just, I just made 5,000 a week. And I was like, all right, cool, man. Like, that's all I needed. You know what? I got back into testing and like saw it through this time. And it's kind of disappointing to hear like from myself, I think about it all the time, like that I couldn't take the step on my own, but it was great that like having a friend do it got me back on that track. 
And um, I still made it in the, I guess it was in my cards because I still made it in the same spot, even though I like kind of gave it up the first time. I still ended up in the same position because it just must've been in my favor. Um, but yeah. I love that. So no sales experience before this either. At all. No. That's pretty crazy. AJ, I know you're a little, you're a little tougher to convince. Yeah. So I was a student at FAU. Well, I actually am still a student. I graduate here in a few months, but I was doing valet at night, but I always knew like school was never really for me. I didn't want to sit behind a desk doing something I didn't really like with the capped income. So I tried every way online on how to make money. And I, I kind of finally found something that started to roll a little bit. And that's at the same time when Sean asked me and I actually told him no right to his face, which to this day, I feel crazy doing. Um, then something hit the fan with that. It didn't really end up working out. And Dom basically just showed me a paycheck and it was it was over from there. Isn't that crazy? I, and what's crazy about this too, you guys, is a lot of times like, and I'll come back in one second, Adam and AJ, I love that. Is like, we don't realize that like the re reason the company is the way it is is because of Sean. Like you would think guys, Sean's been doing this 10 years and he's still out there recruiting the valet people, right? So the reality is like a lot of times we have to come back and bring ourselves back to earth about the reason we've done so good is because our CEO works a lot harder sometimes than we work, right? Sometimes we're like, we've been here two years. I've been here three years. I should be able to relax. I should be able and like Sean's still out there banging the streets, right? Trying to recruit the ballet people like in all these years that he doesn't need it. He did that for you guys, which I think is a big deal. Um, all right, Adam, your quick backstory. You were coming from health insurance. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. So uh, I was doing health insurance for give or take about six months. And it was honestly a a decent experience. I was making pretty good money, but I was just working a ridiculous amount of hours. I was working 80 to 90 hours a week. And I kind of just saw myself as being an agent there where I couldn't grow to my fullest potential. I was most likely on my way to make about six figures a year, but I want to make a lot more than that. And I want a career that I could be in for a while. So that's when I kind of saw what AJ was doing, seeing the numbers he's putting up, seeing how much like flexibility he has how he's his own boss he's not just another agent in some office where you have your boss yelling at you dial this dial that it's very flexible where you're able to kind of be your own boss and do what you want to do and that's kind of how I felt upon this job and just loved it ever since yeah and Adam I remember you coming into the office you pretty much were like as soon as you came in on the first day you were like okay peace out health insurance is that correct yeah exactly I uh pretty much left health insurance and never looked back so I do want to talk about that real quick before we get into some of the other stuff. So I hear a lot of people that toss up the idea, right? And they're like, even people on our team sometimes are like, hey, can we do some health? Should we do some health? Not that it's not good, but what did you see for the life insurance and for what we do that was such a big difference for you to make you be like, no, I'm good. Because sometimes people from here are like, I think I'm going to go sell health insurance. And I'm like, okay, dude, I'm pretty sure you're going to come back. But what for you was like, I, I want to do life for sure. Yeah, so there was a, a couple things in specific that kind of got me over here. And for the most part, I was working in private healthcare, so it was very medically underwritten. So with that being said, there would be a lot, a lot of declines. There would be a lot of people that wanted my help, and I couldn't kind of, I couldn't really help them. I would tell them, like, look, I can't help you. You got to go somewhere else. And on top of that, it's just the commissions aren't as good as they should be, whereas with life insurance, the commissions are pretty insane, where you could be making 80, 90, 100% of the first year's premium. Whereas with health insurance, if you're making, I don't know, 17 to 18, like you're doing really good over there. Yeah. And that's kind of where part of it came from. And then the other part was where I was a captive agent and pretty much my book of business, everybody that I sold, it kind of all went away as soon as I left. And they claim like there's all these residuals and you're going to live off your residuals and everything like that. But in reality, as soon as I left, I didn't get paid a single cent from that. Got it. So, so did you, do you remember, was there like a contract over there? Yeah. So pretty much you lock in for a contract. And with that contract, they pretty much mention that you cannot sell any other form of health or life insurance as long as you're with them. And they pretty much just restrict you to where you literally only use one singular underwriter. Whereas with FFL, you have as many underwriters as you want. And you could kind of reach out and go to other places where you're not captive to one singular agency. And that's where right. I was over there. And I absolutely hated that because a lot of the time I'd get people on the phone. And I knew this wasn't the best product for them, but that's the only thing I had to offer. Right. And, and what that really boils down, what that really boils down to is you can help more people, right? Like you can exactly. help more people get the coverage that they actually want, which is a big deal, right? Money, comp, all that stuff's great. But at the end of the day, like you have people on the phone that want your help and you can't help them. That's kind of like a powerless position to be in. 
Yeah, it's honestly like the worst thing in the world when you literally have someone on the phone that's willing to buy something from you, but you just know that this isn't the best product for them. This isn't what they want, and this isn't what they really need. Where you kind of got to point them in a different direction, hand them off to someone else, and it's just kind of it's it's unfortunate when you get people on the phone, you can't really help. Them. Like yeah. that's what I want to do for a living is help everyone I can. But when you're in a place that doesn't allow you to help people, it's kind of tough. It's hard. I can imagine. Um, okay, perfect. Thanks, Adam. So, guys, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff here. We're going to talk about and guys, what these guys are really good at, unfortunately for us, because we don't have enough time in the in the week to talk to them, is that they're really good at everything, right? They're building a team quick. Um, all their agents come out of the gate strong and fast, and they go all in, which I think is really important. So um, you guys are sharing the opportunity. You guys have a great lead strategy. You guys are banging the phones every day. So there's going to be a lot of different things to, to, to grip from this. Um, AJ, what is something that you think, and it can be on any of those things, right? Like, I don't want to limit you guys and make you go into one. If you had to give these guys, you know, something that you think is super important, the thing that you think you're the best at and the thing that you want to talk about, what would that be? Yeah, certainly. So I think at the end of the day, everything about this business comes down to conviction. So there's other people selling $50,000, $70,000 a month. If another man can do that, why can't I? Um, at the end of the day, it's input output. If I input the same things, if I say the right things at the right time, I'm going to get the same results. As long as I'm in the chair doing the inputs, the outputs will come. Um, additionally, when it comes to recruiting, um, you have to be absolutely sold on this business yourself to be able to sell other people on this business. So I truly believe this is the best opportunity in the world. There's no barrier to entry and you could come out the gate like we did making commissions that are like, where else can you do this? I don't know. Dom tried every other sales job in the world and like, that's just really how it is. It takes a long time to get started. It takes a long time to go. This, there's no barrier to entry and you could go right away. So uh, did that answer your question? Conviction? Yeah, conviction. I love that. I think, you, like you said, you've got to be all in, right? Um, and AJ, I kind of remember you being like at the office and being like, you know, I have to go to my shift at the valet and we're like, you should just not go. And you're like, should I just not go? Um, because you really, you really were like, once you were sure about the opportunity, asked a lot of questions, made sure it was good for you, you were in. But what are some of the things on a daily basis that you do that that you you've obviously selling 30K this month? What are some of the things on a daily basis that you do that you think maybe other people could implement or that they're not doing to get where they want to go? In all honesty, from what I've seen, people that haven't been successful um, quickly in this business, they're just not doing enough. Um, they're not doing enough work. Um, maybe they're not learning enough. Maybe they're not curious enough. Maybe they're not hopping on Zoom on live dials and asking for input asking for advice. Um, I think that's it. I don't know. I don't think that was a very good answer, but <laughs> no, no, that was good. The answer is the answer. So if that's what you're doing. Um, so you're at the office every single day. How many, what time do you show up? I'm here at 8am. And what time do you leave? Uh, sometimes eight, sometimes nine, sometimes later. Yeah. So I know I've seen you guys kind of be crazy. And like, I see your guys' Instagrams and you're like in the office sometimes at like two in the morning. And I'm like, what are you, you're sort of like game planning, writing stuff on the whiteboard so that that's definitely conviction um so what is it for you guys is it an activity goal aj is it like i have to make this many dials i have to make this many sales a lot of the times it is like activity just talking to enough people um and what i realized is you always know what the right thing to do is at any time and you don't have to do it you don't have to be crazy you don't have to do it 100 percent of the time but if you do that right thing which in the back of your mind you know 70 percent of the time you'll be successful and you'll be successful fast. Yeah. And I think that is super huge, guys. And I want to I want to just make this clear because I don't think necessarily everybody has to work, you know, a gazillion hours a week. But if you guys are wondering, like AJ did 30, Dom did 30, Thomas and Adam are on their way to 1520 this month. So guys, the reality is they're 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 showing up more than a lot of people show up, right? And it, and they're also like not pretending. So what I used to do is I'd be like, hey. You know, I worked 10 hours today, but my 10 hours was like ran to the grocery store, did my workout, scrolled on Instagram a little bit. So like when I go to the office and I see these guys, they're on the phones, like the whole, I can't even sometimes focus in there because there's too many people making sales at once and they're not hanging out, talking to each other, which I think can be, um, you know, a big deal. So it's like their conviction is so serious that even in a group of all their guys hanging out in the office, like they're on the phones, they're dialing. And I've seen them, they're, they're competitive. They're putting their, they're putting their numbers up. Um, Dom, can you talk about your guys' um, like, well, you talk about whatever you want, but I'd like one of you guys to tell us about your lead strategy. Cause a lot of times people want to know how much are we putting into leads? What are we using? How, how are we dialing them? What are we using? Yeah. So um, when I started, I've always heard leads are a huge thing. Um, I think the biggest part is getting a little uncomfortable about it. 
So, you know, starting off, you're not going to do five, ten thousand dollars worth of leads a month. Um, but you start to ramp up as you get more sales, uh, as it starts flowing, you start investing that into it, into leads rather than just, you know, putting it away. Um, so we do a lot of bronze leads. And the reason we do that is there's a lot of bad bats, um, which the way I see it, the more people you can talk to for your investment, the more profitable you're going to be. Um, we've also implemented some sort of uh, social media leads as well. Um, but that's basically it. So Don, the, bron the bronze leader is 75 cents and they're three, four months old. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So sometimes people get bronze leads and they say, these leads suck. I can't believe you told me to buy these. What do you say to that? No such thing as a bad lead. Um, and trust me, I hear it in here as well. Um, and that's just kind of, you have to have that mindset of there is no such thing as a bad lead. If you go through a hundred of them and you don't get a sale, you think about how many presentations did I do? Because um, that next person can be your sale. So if you just keep going forward with them and keep putting in the hours consistently, you will eventually get you know, the results you're looking for. Yeah. And Dom, how many times do you guys dial them? So you have all these bronze leads. Do you dial them one time, never come back to them? What does that look like? Do you guys text them? We usually do three times each, um, calling, you know, three times in a row. Um, and then honestly, after that, we'll just kind of leave them. We'll shoot them a text maybe. But that's the nice thing about the 75 cent leads. It's not like you're investing the $16 per lead and, you know, you one of them's disconnected, it's the end of the world. Um, you have the flexibility to just keep churning them, keep getting more. Um, it doesn't break the bank. Yeah. And how much are you spending every week? I would say about a thousand a week. Thousand. Okay, so a week. And that's like bronze leads plus maybe some social media leads that you guys run on Facebook. Yeah. Okay, cool. So is that pretty much been the strategy the entire time or have you guys changed it we're starting to ramp it up as we're getting just the more comfortable with it yeah that's really all that's changed okay so as a new agent i was a new agent that comes in because you guys recruit a lot of people how do you explain leads to them like when they're like it's weird to have to buy something like what do you mean how do you how do you get them to understand why that's so important i explain to them that if they go through you know 800 bronze leads and get one sale they break even so if you look at it in that sense you really can't lose. You get two sales off of 800 of them, you're profitable. So it's more so putting in the work rather than, you know, oh, that one, all these are disconnected, all, all these, you know, no one's answering, they don't want it. You just have to keep pushing to get that profitability. It's also yeah. important to explain to them as well um, that you should almost enjoy buying the leads. Like it would suck if you didn't have to because the great thing I, I enjoy about buying the leads is that I get to kind of create how much money I'm going to make from them. You know, like I really choose how much I can profit from them because I can buy more. It's my choice. Like I want to be in control of everything in this business, which is like the what the business gives you is the, is the ability to control everything. When you get to buy leads, you're in control of how much you get to make. You can either buy more or buy less. And like that will be your outcome. It's kind of important to understand that as an agent, it's not really a bad thing. Like this can make you more money. Just you, you got to kind of ease into it or go all ahead. Yeah. Um, and, and I love that. And Thomas, explain to me, like when you first, on your first day, you sucked, right? Yeah. Did you close any sales on your first day? No. Okay. But then you got better. Now you're closing a lot of sales. What do you think that like you did to get better? Was it just talking on the phone to clients? Did you role play your script with Dom 300 times? Did you practice the objections? Like what are like the tangible things that you're like, this is going to make me better? Yeah. Um. So one of the things, first of all, is when your team has a script and there's some on even the Inspire um, website and everything, when you have a script, I think it's really, really important to get it down perfectly. I think what also started making me more sales is is implementing that on the phone. When you're stuttering on the phone, especially in like the objectable parts of the script, you're gonna lose it. When you get really, really fluent with it, and I mean practicing it so much, that increases your sales. Just, just something that is completely in your control. Like you can sit and talk to your friend and read the script over and over and over again. That will make you more sales. Like when I first started, I was literally sitting in my apartment with my girlfriend reading it to her. And then like it, it kind of sucked yeah and like was it what we wanted to be doing no but like that made me better doing it in the office um just like 
getting really good at it. And I have great examples of that with agents we bring into the office. I, I've had experiences where I brought someone in and they didn't do anything in, like with the business when they weren't here. And then when they would get here, they wouldn't like how they were performing and complain about it. But when I was like, hey, how much are you going over the script? They're like, oh, I haven't read it since last time I was here. And it's like, well, yeah, that, that's why. We have another agent in here. His name's Ryan O'Keefe. He's still working the ballet. He's killing it. And um, he told the guy the same thing. They were at like same starting point. And he's like, dude, I read this all the time. I read it in the car. I read it when I'm at home. And that's why he's doing naturally better than the other agent, just because he's putting more time into getting comfortable with the script, which relays over the phone. When you sound like you've done it so many, so many times, like you sound professional, you're going to close more sales than the guy that's like, oh, the, the stuttering through the script. And um, I think a, another big thing is finding the good coaches. You have to be coachable, but also finding the right people to coach you. I know like if we had a new guy come in and he listened to one of my calls and then came over to me and was like, hey, I think you should change this. I just like respectfully wouldn't listen to him um, just because you're, you're new here. I feel like like, yeah, people might take that the wrong way, but also like it's your money. It's your business. You really need, I wouldn't listen to anyone that's producing less than you. Um, even if they're a great person, that's amazing. But I feel like it's really important to just listen to the people that are doing better than you, because those are the people like, you don't want to be listening to anyone that's doing less than you. Um, just because yeah. you want to be moving forward constantly. Um, that's literally so important, you guys. And I hope you wrote that down. Stop taking advice from people who are not where you want to be. I see that all the time, right? Like I'll, someone be like, oh, so-and-so told me this. And I'm like, dude, so does so-and-so hasn't sold a policy in six months. Yeah. What the heck are you doing talking to so-and-so, right? Or so-and-so told me I should do this in my business. They told me I should open an LLC and get the accountant and, you know, put my put my drafts in the cloud. And I'm like, yeah, dude, they're doing all that. They, they don't sell any policies though, right? And so I think what's so important is mastering your craft. And these guys are always on the phone. And one thing I will tell you guys, and I know this is going to seem so small, you know what these four guys never do? And I'm gonna have to edit this part. They don't worry about dumb shit. Okay. Like, you know, who's they worry about the script. What am I going to say on the phone? They, these guys are never texting me like, oh, Hey, you know, I was wondering what the commission renewal is on this one product and what I'm going to get paid in year seven of the percentage of this and this. I'm like, dude, I'm just like, what are you guys doing? Dialing? What are you doing? You guys good? Yeah. We're dialing. We're making sales. What's up? Hey, what are you guys doing? Just dialing. What's up? What are you guys doing today? You want to do a training? No, we're dialing. Like that's literally all they do. They're not, there's a lot of times people are like, they go to meetings a lot. They plugged into everything. They're in every single boot camp, every single YouTube video. They know every intricate deal about Americo, Eagles, Premier, what the heck they do and what, how, like, I'm like, these guys don't worry about that. What are you doing? We're helping families. We're dialing. What's up? Right. They're, they're so focused on only the things that help them help families. They're not worried about what the NLG product does this. And what does this little tiny rider mean? And all that. They're like, we're just helping families. Right. Sometimes I'm like, I haven't talked to these guys in, in six days. Like, what's up? Right. And then there's some people that I'm like, I'm talking to you guys all the time. We're texting all the time. I got a question here. I got a question there. I can't get into my HCMS. What about this? What about that? What about this? What's my password? I don't know. What product do I write? What do I do this? And I'm like, you're worried about so much stuff that is not helping families. If these guys, and, and I think that's such a big message all of you guys can take away. I do not hear from these guys unless it is affecting their ability to issue a policy for a family. That's the only things they ask me questions about. I'm like, you guys good? Yeah, we're dialing. We're good. Are you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. All right. Talk to you guys next week. Cause they're just figuring it out, which I think is so important. Um, AJ, can you talk about your, can you talk about like the mindset of the business, right? Like you have bad day, you don't make sales, you get pissed off, you get emotional. Like what is your mindset around the whole thing? Yeah. Sometimes it does get, and I understand when people walk around and they get really frustrated and it happens all the time. Like you lose a client at banking, it's $300 a month. That's 2,500. They just took out of your pocket, but does being frustrated make you more money? Does being frustrated improve your business? It never does. Even if you try to like push it down, but you're still a little frustrated, the clients still hear it on the phone. So I don't know. I just think the best way to handle it is just kind of have a very, very short memory. Forget about it. That's what the business is. It'd be statistically impossible to close 100% of clients at banking. You're going to lose them sometimes. That's just part of the game. That's just part of the business. Just keep going. Yeah. And AJ, I want to talk about your tonality on the phone. You pretty much just tell people what to do. Is that correct? For the most part, yeah. And how <laughs> much? Because a lot of times some people are like, oh, you know, and, and I struggled with this because I was too nice, right? So like you will close more than me because I was like pretty nice on the phone. Like there'd be someone that you could close that I couldn't. How important do you think like your tonality and the control that you have on the phone um, is to like your closing and your helping families? You it definitely matters. It definitely, definitely matters. It's 
kind of hard for me to give you a very specific example, but it's kind of like a fine line between being very assertive, but also being curious because like being curious and asking them good questions um, kind of builds credibility and trust. And when you're doing telesales, it's all about credibility and trust. Yeah. So AJ, if I'm on the phone with you and I'm like, ah, oh, AJ, I don't know. Could you like, yeah, I'm thinking about it. I'm just going to, can you call me back like next Tuesday? Like, let me know. What's your answer? Yeah, John. So what we're going to do here, we're going to fill out an application. Have you done this before? Is this the first time? And then I kind of just explain how it works, exactly what we're going to do. And I try to force them to hang up on me. I try to push so hard to the point that like they hang up on me because if I don't like that's a lost sale anyway. So I might as well push and push and push and maybe get some out of it. Yeah. And you're not calling them on Tuesday. Like you're, you're on to the next. Is that correct? Like if they're like, oh, follow yeah. up with me on the seventh of next month. You're like, no, I'm, I'm busy. Right. So yeah. I think, I think that's super important to you guys, because it, again, it's the control of yourself. It's control on the phone. It's control over your schedule. Right. I hear a lot of people being like, oh, I, I just need to think about this. Can you call me back? Like on the seventh of the month? Like these guys are like, no, we're closing. We're putting in an application today or we're on to the next. Cause we have business. We need people that need help. We need people that need death benefits. We need people that leave need living benefits. These guys aren't scheduling out next Tuesday at 7 PM. They're like, let's go. We're doing this now, or we're doing this never. And I think that's super, super important for some of you guys that are, that are, you know, trying to, you're trying to work around the client schedule. No, the clients understand that they're working with a state underwriter today. Um, now, AJ, I know this is something you're really good at too. If I'm, I'm a brand new agent, you recruit me. You're really good at expectations. And I know there's a lot of people that you won't work with. What is, what would you tell me if I'm like, Hey, Jay, just started tomorrow's my first day. What are my expectations to get mentorship from you? What do I have to do as a new agent? Usually I handle that by saying why people fail quickly in this business. And why those reasons that? are being, if you're arrogant and you think, if you think you know it all, cause you don't, you're new, you don't, if you're not coachable, you have to be coachable. You have to take advice pretty much with everything. And that, I really think that really sums it up. If you're coachable and you don't think you're too good and you're willing to take advice all the time, you're going to, you're going to be successful. Cause if you, if we can show you how to do the same exact things we're doing, cause we've had people literally read off the script word for word and close deals. If you're just willing to listen, you'll be successful. Yeah. Do you ever tell anybody like, Hey, Hey, I just don't think this is a good fit for you. Sometimes. Um, I try to help them as much as possible, but like, if they're really not, and it's making it really, really hard. Absolutely. Yes. Would that be like a scheduling thing or like they complain too much or is there? Not I hate complaining. Complaining is a big deal for me. Like if you're sitting here moaning in my ear, like why it's not going to work. I like pull you to the side. I'll pull you out and, and be like, dude, you got to straighten this up. Or like, honestly, don't come in because you're hurting my business because everybody else is selling less because you're complaining to them. Yeah. I think that's huge. Um, okay. Thanks, AJ. Um, Adam, how much do you think, and I know you kind of came from an office environment before, how much do you think your guys' team culture and the, the accountability that you guys have for each other has affected how much you guys are selling? Yeah. So I think it's pretty massive how, uh, pretty much accountability is everything. So if you see someone that's next to you, that's kind of on their phone all the time, like not really dialing, you'd be like, Hey, like you should be dialing. You should be here if you want to work. Like, don't be here if you're just here to sit on your phone and not really work. We're here to work and we're here to make money. And it's kind of like if one person next to you is just on their phone, scrolling on Instagram, going on TikTok. It's like, then the next person over to them is going to be on Instagram, scrolling on TikTok. And it kind of just like the energy and the people around you is kind of what makes you. It's kind of like uh, everybody around you is how you're going to feel and kind of how you're going to operate. And I think that if you surround yourself in a good environment, everybody is there to encourage you and hold them accountable. That's kind of how you could succeed. Yeah. And it's forcing you guys to level up, right? Exactly. Like, and like we're I've here to you... uh, pretty much make everyone better. I mean, that's our whole goal. It's, we're not here to kind of like if, if we could make the same amount of money working another job, like we want to be here so that we could be here for a long term, a future and kind of make more money than we ever will anywhere else. And the only yeah. way we're going to do that is holding everyone accountable. Yeah. And I think that's super important about just like who's in your circle from a work standpoint, like these guys, these four in the office guys, and they have a lot of, a lot of people in the office. One day I go in there and I'm like, Hey, how do you guys, every time I come in here, there's, there's a different person sitting in the office. How do you guys decide who gets the office? And they're like, whoever sells more, they're whoever sells more for the week gets the office. If they don't sell more and someone else beats them, they get kicked out. So the real the reality is guys a lot of times people would, would be offended by that energy but these guys are like why would we be offended by by trying to bring each other up trying to push each other to another level right a lot of us that i've been guilty of this for we're hanging out with people that are bringing us down we're talking to negative people in the business we're talking about oh it's okay that you know you only sold you know nothing this week and it's like these guys are like no that's not okay 
dude, they're like, if you're not going to sell nothing, can you run and get us lunch? Cause like, we're here to make money. Like, can you guys get, can you pick up the coffee? These guys are like, whoever sells at least has to go pick up the lunch. I've seen them do it. Right. So the reality is a lot of times people, you need that energy to thrive. And my point with having Adam talk about that, you guys, is that if you're not somewhere where you can get an office, you can create that on on Zoom. You can create that with your person, right? You can create that with Desiree. You can create that with Nicole. You reach out to Digna. Digna has all of her virtual office on Zoom. Find a run buddy who's going to make you better instead of run buddies. And, and even if that's, I mean, Alex, uh, Alex Praza used to do it where he would have everybody um, like text in the morning that they had to be up by a certain time. And some of you guys are like, oh, that's so stupid. Guys, these guys sell the most for a reason because they hold each other accountable to leveling up as opposed to talking to the people around them that are, that are causing them to level down. Does that make sense? Um, all right, Dom, what are you guys doing to share the opportunity? So I think a big thing that we've all worked on hugely is getting uncomfortable, um, getting out of your comfort zone and really talking to anyone and everyone you can, even when you don't want to. I think that's where you can really make the difference to find more people because everyone's looking for a killer. You want a killer. You want someone that's going to come into this head first, uh, but you're never going to find those people if you're not talking to 20 people to find one of them. So that's something we've all implemented. We've also started building up our social medias, which is huge. Um, Thomas has been a, done a very good job with making reels. Um, I put all his reels on my story, stuff like that. So there's always a way to branch out more um, to share the opportunity. Some people will tell you get lost. And you got to be okay with that. You got to find the people that are going to say, wow, like, why did you decide to talk to me? And that's who you need to look for every single day. Uh, you're out, I guess. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Um, so you guys, Thomas, I know you guys, so you guys all have things, right? And a lot of times people are, are like, oh, you know, these guys are young, whatever, but you guys, you guys got your girlfriends, you guys got your family, you got things. And one thing I never see you guys do, which I think is so important. A lot of agents in this business make this mistake. And I used to do this sometimes too. You come in, you do really well for like a month, you make some money. And then you go to like Tulum or you go to like Cancun or like, you're like, oh, I, I have to take a, a, a trip to Disneyland and like spend all my money. Or I bought a, a new car or something crazy like that. You guys are like locked and loaded. What is your conversation, Thomas, like with your girlfriend or your family or other obligations? that you're like, hey, this is like important to me right now. Like, how do you do that? Because you guys are in there on Monday, Tuesday, Friday. Sometimes I see you guys on Saturday. Like, there's not a day that you guys take off. Um, I think it was very well understood at the beginning of my relationship. Um, just, I mean, because that's kind of like my best friend. Um, she's on the call right now watching as well. She's actually um, taking her exam on the 15th. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so she's ready to get locked in too. She's in the office here learning. Um, I think it's just really understood that we, um, I made a promise from the beginning as well, like whether it was going to be with her or without her, that like there's somewhere I'm going to get in life. I have this vision. I'm going to make it work. I'd love for you to be here for the ride and I want to take you there. Um, but like, I can't have anything hold me back. And immediately it was just like, yeah, like, like, let's do this together. So like there was never any um, friction or restriction. Like it doesn't bother her or my family um, one bit, whether I'm here all day, because I mean, there's something in mind. There's there's an end goal. And without the sacrifice, we're not gonna make it. Um, I don't mind doing it alone. I've I've I don't I'd rather that. And you know what I mean? Um, if she doesn't want to work at all, um, I'd love to to make that happen. Um, and that's my plan. Um, so it's like, but we can't have two things at the same time, you know? Um, yeah. so with that, it's just finding the people that you're gonna surround yourself with that don't wanna kind of put chains on you and they're like, hey, like. I want to let you do your thing because I, I believe in you. You're going to get us there. And that's kind of what it is. Um, I guess yeah. I just found someone that has the right support. No, and I think that's huge. And it's so important in the business because like, and guys, it could be anything, right? Like there's so many people that are like, oh, I'm just so sad. I didn't make any money this month. I'm like, dude, I follow you on Instagram. You're at the bar every weekend. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? Like you didn't make any money. Like you've been on three vacations in three months. Like, when are you working? Right. Or they're like, oh my gosh, I'm just so sad. And it's like, dude, you have a new Gucci bag. I just saw you with a new Gucci bag. Like, how do you not have money? So I bring that up to say like one, having a supportive circle is super important, but also like you got to go to work. Right. And these things take sacrifices. Like sometimes there's not vacations and there's not going club and then there's not all this stuff. And even if you're, even from a, even from a family standpoint, right. I see a lot of people, it's like your why generally is your family. Right. So don't, I know I, Vincent always says this, don't let your why 
why get in the way of your why. Like we're trying to go somewhere. We're trying to do something. So like all that stuff can wait. And I think that's super important that you guys do that. And I would say that that is the number one reason people, and when people fail in the business, it's because of that. They can't hold themselves accountable to like, hey, no matter what is going on over here and what crazy opportunities and money spending things that we have over here and vacations and cool things and shiny objects, we're locked in. We're at the office. We're dialing, right? We're, we're, we're doing ours. And so I think that's super important. So um, you guys have been phenomenal. Before I let you off here, I'd love to go to, to all four of you. If there's one thing that you guys do that you think is the most important to leave these guys with that they can implement, um, Thomas, what is that for you? getting obsessed you have to be obsessed with what you're doing like the reason we're here all week and everything like that is because I wouldn't want to be anywhere else like yeah like it, it could be fun to to go other places but like I can't think of a better place than to be at the office um like when I'm going to sleep at night I'm thinking about what I'm going to accomplish the next morning well on Saturdays like I don't want to be anywhere else on Saturdays when there's money that can be made on Saturday um it's, it's just like I, I'm completely obsessed with the idea of succeeding and that's why I'm going to win and same thing for the people around me and on my team because when you get there it's literally impossible to lose you know if you want it bad enough if anything you want bad enough it's impossible to lose as long as you're obsessed with it like you, you will make it happen it's like I believe it's impossible yeah I love that that's huge get obsessed Dom what do you got I think the biggest thing is you have to think about like you're sitting at a chessboard. And I think everyone's afraid to make moves. You, you, you're you sitting there thinking, hmm, like, is this the best move I can make? You have to be willing to make a mess. You have to move your pieces all around, lose, set it up, start again. Um, and I think that's what holds a lot of people back. They're afraid to fail. And that's really where the biggest failure is. Uh, not starting, not trying. Dom, did you just say that? Or was that like out of a book? Because that was like... <laughs> <laughs> like you like did you read that because that was very that was phenomenal thank like, you stop thinking about the move and just make the move right I think that's yeah. also what holds a lot of people back too is like stop worrying about what the heck is is you know the whole recipe just just you got the ingredients right here put them in first I think yeah. that's huge um AJ so if you want to be somewhere don't ever stop believing that you can get there and sometimes it will be delusional sometimes it will feel delusional but the moment you stop believing it will never happen. AJ, did you think like on your first day in the office, did you think that you could do it? I knew in the back of my mind, maybe I didn't believe it and I didn't talk like I believed it, but I knew in the back of my mind, if somebody else could, why can't I? And no, it took me 3000 dials to get my first sale. Like that, that's real. And I doubted it for you a did. long time. That was a trick but, question because you did know, and you did talk like it. I remember the first day I met AJ, I was like, dude, this, this freaking guy. But I knew you'd be successful because he came in, not like in a, in an arrogant cocky way, but like, dude, these guys aren't special. Like I can do whatever they're doing. Tell me what they're doing. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. And I'm going to have no problem. Like wasn't, was not concerned about his abilities to go out and make something happen. And I think that's super, super important. Just that belief level in yourself as well, but also willing to be coachable. Thank you. I'm like, I answered his question. It was a trick question. Um, Adam, real quick. So you're the newest. You've had, you've had 10K in two weeks, okay? Um, hardly any time in life insurance at all. What is your advice for a brand new agent that wants to get started quick? What should they do? Yeah, so I think a, a couple of things. One of them is definitely hold yourself accountable. If you want to make the kind of money that you want to be making, you kind of got to push yourself to the limit. So show up to, if you're going to be on a Zoom call or in the office at 8 a.m. every day, don't be late. Be here every single day, early get ready to work, dial while you're here, don't be wasting time. And also for new agents, I think one of the biggest things is to be coachable. And I know we said it earlier, but being coachable is everything. You got to listen to everyone around you and the people that are making the money, I mean, they're telling you something for a reason. They're not there to help you fail. They're there to like make you win. And when AJ says something, when Dom says something, when Thomas says something, I'm here to listen. I want to absorb all of it and be the best I can to the best potential that I have. And that's really all that it is. Just be accountable and be coachable. Yeah, I think that's huge. And Adam, it seems like you kind of show up like that in every aspect of your life. Like I know, like at the at the office, right? Like we have this work from home vibe. But when I when I met you at the office, he was dressed up like suit and tie. And he's like, this is just how I show up. Like when I show up, I mean business, no matter where I'm at. Yeah, I feel like uh, when you're at work, you got to be in your work jersey. It's kind of like if you're going to play a football game, you're in a football jersey. It's just the yeah. uh, look good, feel good, work good. Yeah, 
I think that's huge. Well, I'm really proud of you guys. Obviously, you know, we could split the four of you up and I wanted to do a panel discussion tonight because you guys are crushing it as a squad individually. We could split the four of you up and talk to each one of you individually about what you got going on. But I think this is a great start. I'm really proud of you guys and I'm very excited to continue to see what you guys continue to accomplish. If you guys didn't take notes on this call, that would be crazy. And what's, what's also crazy about this, guys, it's the last thing I'm going to say. Everyone thinks, well, not everyone, but a a lot of times people who are not where they're at in the business, they think that these guys or people that are doing well have some sort of special sauce. So what have we learned on this call, guys? It's it's the same stuff, right? They call the leads. They they buy leads. They actually buy old leads, much older, you know, worked leads than, than a lot of us are willing to buy. They call the leads. They text the leads. They do whatever. They just show up earlier. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. It's not rocket science, but that's what they do, right? So a lot of us in our minds, they want to make excuses like, oh, well, it's because they have an office or, oh, well, it's because Adam wears a tie to work or, oh, it's because, you know, AJ has nice hair and they have this and they probably had more money for leads. It's like, no, guys, six months ago, all these, all these guys were at the ballet, like freaking out over a $50 tip. And I say that respectfully in a way that like, that, like that's where they were. No sales experience, no prerequisites, no crazy stuff. Like they just showed up and they're like, where do we pick up the phone? Like, what do we do? And that's literally all it takes. And then they continue to show up every single day. So I'm really proud of you guys. I'm excited for you guys. Anything we can do to help. Thank you for helping out the team. Thank you for helping out the squad. And, and uh, we'll continue to cheer you on. And I'll see you guys in two weeks, two Mondays from now, same time. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.